after four days in France, I finally had the opportunity to go into Paris itself. And oh, what a great day it was going to be. Saturday brought our first day that we were actually going to go into Paris itself. We did get a little bit of a late start due to various things and that kind of set us off a little bit. Immensely of being able to ride the train in because we were having to deal with this massive traffic jam that we ended up driving into Paris. <laughs> but it meant we got to see some other sites we might not have if we'd been on the train. Like the Louvre and then we got to actually drive right past Notre Dame, which was really cool. I wish we'd been able to stop right there and walk in, but there really wasn't any parking lots available, so it wasn't too much of an option, unfortunately. But we did get a good look at it as we drove by, and really need to drive by something with that much history. And to see all the street vendors too, and all the trinkets and artwork and everything else, it would have been nice to shop, but for my budget, it was probably a good thing I didn't. <laughs> and then we started to approach the Eiffel Tower. I'm not even going to try to say it in France, because my accent's terrible, but need to be able to actually see something so famous up close. You can see the crowds were absolutely horrible though, with massively long lines, so the idea of taking a ride up, uh, yeah, that just went out the window really quick. But instead we walked around, we got to see some of the other street vendors selling cheap little trinkets and things. Yeah, all sorts of little stuff there. So what you may not be able to see, is he's essentially doing three card money with cups and balls. And just snag somebody's money. After that, we decided to take a cruise on the river sign. Forgive me if I say it wrong. Now if you'll notice the water was just a little high. Look how close that boat is to the top. So of course one of the things you gotta do is float on the river sign. So that's what we're doing. You can see everything out there behind me. They're actually experiencing flooding stages right now, so we don't get to go quite as far as we normally would. And they've actually got the upper deck of our boat closed because they're worried about people who would be standing if they're hitting the bottom of bridges. <laughs> it's uh, water level's a little high. Here's another look to let you see just how high that water is. It, yeah, they can almost reach up and touch that. It it was high. Normally, those are steps that go down to the water, not have the water right up at them. <laughs> Now this was fun. Over to the left is the famous Louvre. Forgive me if I say it wrong. That is the museum that everybody talks about. You can actually see the giant wheel down there at the end of the Champs Elysees, and just a really nice look around downtown Paris. <laughs> quien consiguió en 1925, mientras que se hablaba de nuevo de destruirla, venderla a un chatarrero crédito, haciéndose pasar por un acto funcionario. It has a bronze statue of a horseman that symbolizes the French Renaissance. This was a gift from the Danes. I love all these houseboats. So I love all the houseboats. One of the things that was really neat was all the artwork on the bridges. Bridges! They've got these huge statues and just something you don't see here in the U.S. at all. And just to be able to look at these things as you're cruising under them was incredible. And of course the views of the tower as well. But it was neat to be able to float on the river and then just look at this incredible artwork you'd never get to see otherwise. <laughs> Statue de la Liberté. En 1889, à l'occasion du centenaire de la Révolution, 
trois ans après l'installation de celle de New York, une réplique de la statue de la liberté a été offerte à la France. Yes, it is pretty cool. We got to go to France to see the Statue of Liberty that is in New York. It's actually a much smaller version. I still really need to be able to see it with the Eiffel Tower together. Three years after the gift of the New York Statue, it was then it's here on the Wait, Why did the French give the United States a the Eiffel Tower? It was turned during the 1937 Paris World's Fair so that it would look in the direction of the United States. The inscription on the book is called July the 4th, 1776, July the 14th, 1789. The dates of the American and French Revolution. En la punta de la isla de los cisnes, frente a ustedes, pues... This is actually the park that runs all the way from the Statue of Liberty. And runs right down the middle of the river. With it being mid-afternoon, it was time for a new destination before it got too late. Yes, France does get trapped. Looks like a nice log jam on the other side. Uh, we're not necessarily for ourselves. And after fighting through traffic and seeing some of the beautiful countryside and chateaus, we made our approach to Versailles. Yes, we went to the Grand Palace. It, it was really weird to have this huge parking lot right next to it. You wouldn't think that the kings would have parked quite like that, but we did. After getting through all the traffic, we made our way right up to the gates of the palace, and oh, was it beautiful and the gold, and just wait until we got inside. But had to get my selfie. With time running short, we headed straight in on some of the tours around Versailles, and immediately headed up to the Madame's apartments. These are Madame Victory's and Madame Adelaide's chambers. And you can just see all the gold trim. Yes, that's real gold, and crystal, and carpeting, and artwork. Oh my goodness, this place is gorgeous. Even a storeroom where they keep a lot of the furniture. You can just see the incredible amount of wealth and money that was poured in here. This is all Madame Victory's furniture and furnishings that she used. With the camera. It does make you wonder where some of those doors go, though. Okay, this would be my family's favorite room, <laughs> the library, because we're big readers. Oh, how much fun would it be to just sit and read all of these books and in, in the comfort? Well, I don't know if the chairs look that comfortable. This is Madame Adelaide's chamber. You can see, okay, that's supposed to be a bed. I don't know that even I would fit it in. I'm short. <laughs> Just the decor here, though. The work around the ceiling and the walls. That carpet. Oh, my. I, I can't even begin to fathom how much time and money and effort in all of this. All of this is the Palace of Versailles. And you can just see all the artwork, tapestry, the inlaid wood floors. This is just absolutely gorgeous. This room is absolutely incredible. I'll show the ceiling in a second, but look at the size of this painting. Do you have an idea? There's the people below. Then you get the windows that go out to the garden. 
and everybody's walking past, this painting up here, which is absolutely huge. But now, look at the ceiling. These rooms are absolutely insane. I mean, the, the wealth, the gold, and again, the painting, and the ceiling. Oh my goodness gracious. This is actually painted onto the wall. <laughs> and then this ceiling, oh my gosh. I can't even begin to describe how incredibly lavish these rooms are and the ceilings. I mean, it's all gold and light. This is what's known as the Mercury Room. And you can see one of the paintings there is the Zampieri, and the other one is Raphael. All the artwork and the ceilings and the gold. At this point, I was almost at a point where I was thinking, is it any wonder that there was a revolt? When you see all the incredibly lavish wealth here, and you know that there were people outside the gates starving to death? Gee so out of touch with reality, but so incredibly lavish and luxurious. Okay, you see pictures of this, but they don't do it justice. I mean, just incredible artwork all the way down the long hall. And then you have windows. It is insane. After the Hall of Mirrors, you get to head over into some of the King's Chambers and the Royal Chambers. And again, just everywhere you look, incredible pieces of art, gold trim and layering and tapestries. The wood, even the wood inlaid floors were incredible. It, it just, it's awe-inspiring, but after a while, it, it almost starts to become frustrating at least for me because there's just so much so much used for just a few people and even as a museum it was almost 
too much for me. It, it was overwhelming how much wealth and money and everything was all crammed into this one place. Just beautiful artwork. I'm, I'm happy it's a museum now. And it's an incredible thing to walk through. But there was just part of me that was just grieved at how much was spent on one family. I understand royalty. I absolutely do, but it was it was too much for me. But after walking around inside, well, you did have to hit outside a little bit. This is a little bit of a look at what it looks like. You can see some scaffolding. They're constantly doing restoration work. Uh, there were places inside that we could see that they were working on as well. And the backside doesn't look quite as lavish, but you still see all the statuary up there. And, and then a little bit of a look at the gardens. And they were huge and beautiful. It was a time of year where there wasn't much of anything in bloom, so... So I'm going to eat a late dinner at this place, and it looks vaguely familiar, but I've never heard of McDon. McDo. McDo. Hey, let's just make do and let's eat a burger.